And uh, you've uh, you've got a gun there that you said he told you to get down in Atlanta, right? He did. The purpose of that gun, according to you, is to carry out this shooting, right? Exactly. And so you get this call, and you're and you're petrified, and so you go over there um, because you're so petrified. But you don't bring the gun that you supposedly bought for purposes of this hit, right? Exactly. So you're sort of a hitman without a weapon. Is that what you are? If that's what you want to say. Well, that's what you were, according to you. If that's what you, I could kill you with my hands. Okay. Is that what you were? I could kill you with my hands. Brother, I don't need first, a gun. This is Mr. Watkins again. Answer okay, I didn't need a gun. Okay. I put. I left the gun there in hopes that he would deter him from doing what he did. Now, you get there, he must have been pretty angry at you for not bringing the gun that he had told you to get, wasn't he? He's ordering everybody around. Well, heck, I mean, you show up, the hitman without the gun? And he made and, sure I didn't get another vicious, one. Excuse me, sir, I'm still asking a question. And this vicious criminal who's never had as much as a parking ticket in his life. That takes a, he, that commits me. a murder, that commits a murder on his first time out for crime? What was he going to escalate to? Mr. Watkins. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Be quiet, be quiet just a minute. Let him finish the question. But again, Mr. Rudolph, I know it's cross-examination. Don't be argumentative in your yes, questions. Sir. Yes, sir. He must have been mighty angry at you to show up at his house for this hit without the gun, wasn't he? Wasn't he. Excuse me? Wasn't he. I just answered you. What's your answer? Yes or no? Wasn't he? Yeah. And so did he say, well, you go on back and you go get that gun because I don't need to be spending another two hundred dollars and having Mr. Kennedy running all around all night looking for a gun. When I didn't need a gun. OK, to, for me to kill somebody, I don't need a gun. Can't you look and see? I'm two hundred and eighty six pounds. OK, I would rip you like a rag doll. OK. Is that what you're going to do to Sharika? I could have, but I didn't. Okay, I could have killed her, the baby. Okay, that wasn't my beef. I didn't kill my wife with the meat cleaver. I threatened her. Okay, I didn't hit Bridget with the crowbar. I threatened her. I was a dog barking. I didn't do nothing. I ran. After my wife did that to me, I left New York, packed up, took my tools and said, I'm a good looking man, I'll be able to get another woman. Left, went to Atlanta, it was in a strip club with hundreds hundreds. When I had a problem with the girl I was dealing with in Atlanta, packed up, went to Charlotte, met Bridget. When I had a problem with Bridget, I packed up, went back to Atlanta, I ran. This is what I tried to encourage the young man to do. I told him not to do it. For six months, I avoided him. I didn't go ahead and do it. I couldn't do it. He forced me to do it. He threatened me and the ones I loved. And it's still not over. So feel it. Feel the truth. Okay, I come from a city where you can feel it. You can tell when someone's selling you shit and when somebody's telling the truth. Feel it. Or your city is doomed. It'll be like New York and Atlanta within 10 years. Remember what I said. He's representing a person who killed, had his baby's mama and baby contracted out to kill. And all the time I'm looking at my girl and baby. How did you think I felt? I'm still human, even though I have a long criminal history. I did it all, but I'm still human. God forbid. Anything further? You're right about that.